With the knowledge that I'm about to pass on in this video, I could have turned a 10 mil investment into a 150 mil payout. Today I'm going to talk about what happened, why it happened, and how we can use this information to make hundreds of mils or even billions of GP in the future. To get the context for this video, I highly recommend watching my previous one by clicking either this card or the video link in the description. But basically, I stumbled upon something at the perfect time. I was mining rocks that are unlocked with the completion of the quest, making friends with my arm, when those items suddenly began skyrocketing in price. I got a timer going and clocked mining earth salt at just over 4 million GP an hour, and soon after this, the prices began to crash. The ability to make 4 mil in a single hour of AFK mining was truly once in a lifetime. The reason it was so lucrative was due to an update released on November 8th of 2018. Since the same update will never take place twice, chances are that the prices of the rock salts will never again be that expensive. The November 8th update that created this huge sudden price increase was titled the Portal Nexus. It's an object that can be built inside a new special room, redundantly named the Portal Nexus, inside a player-owned house. That kind of reminds me about the fact that to get from al Karid to the Caridian Desert, you have to trade Shantae at Shantae Pass to buy a Shantae Pass to go through the Shantae Pass. The Portal Nexus is freaking awesome. It's basically a fancy portal in which you can add a teleport to places that normal house portals can go to. But this exquisite portal isn't limited to one place. The highest tier of it, requiring 92 construction, allows you to add all teleports. This is great and all, but you may be wondering what the heck this has to do with the massive price spike. Well, unlike normal house portals which require 100 times the amount of items for a teleport, the portal nexus requires 1000. Which means that to add the troll stronghold teleport to it, you need 3000 earth salt, 1000 tea salt, and 1000 basalt. So all of a sudden, hundreds or even thousands of players were trying to buy these items in the thousands. And there were quite a few people who were willing to pay an excessively high price for them, especially the house hosts. Being one of the first hosts to have the portal nexus as well as all the teleports would pretty much guarantee that you would get the majority of the guests and therefore donations. But basalt, tea salt, and earth salt weren't the only supplies that went up in price. Law runes are a primary ingredient for most teleports, and to add all 18 teleports to the Nexus portal, you need 30,000 of them. I personally sold 20,000 of my law runes that I had gotten through Slayer and Bossing and whatnot to another player at the Grand Exchange at a price of 390 each. At the time, OS Buddy was showing a trade price of 394 GP, and I expect that was around the maximum price that he reached after the update was released. The normal price of law runes before word of the update was 244 gold, and they're just now returning to their previous average price of around 225. So I technically profited 3.3 mil if I were to buy them all back as I'm working on this video. Other items that spiked in price due to this update were bananas and blood runes. Unfortunately though, I can't really speculate on what these items peaked at because I didn't try buying or selling any at the time and the Grand Exchange market prices are actually worthless. Fast changes in prices are extremely poorly reflected from day to day. However, we can see the actual price of an item if the graph shows two or more days in a row being around the same price. Seeking more data, I went around in World 330 soliciting answers from house hosts, and thankfully Dumb Host was able to help me out. He bought all the supplies for the 18 possible teleports for the Portal Nexus on release day. He recalls bananas being between 300 and 400 GP each. He believes that blood runes are around 450 GP as well. So special thanks to Dumb Host for that info. He seems like a pretty cool guy, so if you need a house host, I'd suggest showing him some love. Blood runes started at 315 GP and peaked at around 450 according to our source, a 43% increase. Law runes started at 244 each and spiked up to 394 from what I saw. That's a 61% growth. Bananas rose from their stable price of around 52 GP to 300 GP at the minimum, a 477 plus percent increase. Earth salt rose from an extremely steady price of 95 GP to a maximum of around 1075 while I was mining this stuff on release day. That's a whopping 1,031.6% increase, more than 11 times its original price. But even more insane was Basalt. Its constant price was 130 GP before news of this update. 
On release day, I sold some that I had mined for 6,000 gold per basalt. The price increase on this item was over 4,515%, 46 times its original price. Elemental runes were also needed in a huge amount. 38,000 water runes were required for all 18 teleports in the Portal Nexus. But yet, none of the elemental rune prices really changed at all. So let's recap what happened. The Portal Nexus released, causing prices of related items to spike, but not every item rose by the same percentage. Elemental runes, which were required in the largest numbers, didn't change at all. Or at the very minimum, they didn't rise in price inside the Grand Exchange enough to sway the daily average. So now we've talked about what happened. The next question is, why is Gamora? I mean, uh, why did it happen? Well, the answer can be found in one of the simplest laws of economics, supply and demand. Elemental runes have a huge stock in the Grand Exchange. Thousands of players regularly flip them for a 1 GP profit per rune. On November 10th, over 117 million water runes were traded without so much as raising the average price a single gold piece. This means that there was such a huge supply of 5 GP water runes in the Grand Exchange that it had met the continuing demands of buyers over a 24 hour period. The other elemental runes had pretty much the same story around update time. Law and Blood Runes both rose by more than 40%, but less than 70% of their original price. This makes sense because they're both higher tier runes, meaning they're quite harder to get than the basic ones like Mind and Elemental Runes. But they're still stocked in some magic shops and regularly flipped in large numbers by players, so supply was still decently high in the Grand Exchange. Eventually though, the supply of regularly priced runes ran out, and the players selling them at higher prices started reaping the profits. At some point, the prices got so high that I think many people, including myself, started selling their runes from the bank for a huge profit. Bananas, with their nearly 500% price spike, were a different story. There isn't really a source where people can stock up on lots of them at once. The fastest way to obtain them seems to be to buy 27 of them at Marim, Bank, and Rinse and Repeat. But you need to have Monkey Madness 2 finished to do this, and no one who has done that quest would be willing to run bananas to the bank for no XP and maybe 300k GP per hour. So naturally, without too many in the Grand Exchange, prices went up quite a bit when a ton of players were looking to buy 1,000 of them. Urtsalt was pretty insane. The quest that unlocks the ability to mine it, making friends with my arm, is a relatively unknown, underrated quest with fairly high requirements and anyone who isn't an avid farmer pretty much has no reason to do it. Additionally, not very many people at all mind this stuff for profit. I rarely saw anyone else there besides me and maybe some Ironmen in the couple days before the Portal Nexus was released. So on November 10th, the demand for this item rose exponentially since 3,000 Earth Salts are required to add the Troll Stronghold Teleport to the Portal. And the supply wasn't nearly enough to meet the demands and keep the price constant. Basalt was one of the least required items for the Portal Nexus, only taking 1,000 for the single Troll Stronghold teleport. But yet, this item multiplied in price by 46 times. The second highest spiking item, Urtsalt, only multiplied in price by 11 times, despite players needing 3,000 of them instead of 1,000. I believe the reason for this difference also lies in supply and demand. Urtsalt is stackable, and at 95 GP each, it was much more worthwhile to mine than Basalt at 130 GP, which requires you to run upstairs and have Snowflake note it for you. Add on the fact that you get between 3 and 5 salts at once, and it makes Basalt mining a complete waste of time. So there was such a tiny supply of Basalt in the Grand Exchange that prices skyrocketed to their absolute peak at around 6k each. What I'm wondering though, is why the Basalt was 130 GP for a while, despite the supply being so low and the teleports it makes being so handy. Either way though, this item is where I got my statement that I could have turned 10 million gold into 150. If I bought in even after they began to rise at 200 GP each, I could have gotten 50,000 of them for 10 mil. And this would have been theoretically possible because a total of almost 447,000 of them had been traded before they rose to over 200. If I sold all 50,000 basalts at only 3,200 GP each, which was a little over half of what they peaked at, I would have gotten 150 mil in return. If I would have chosen to be a little bit more bold and sell them for 5k each, I would have gotten 250 mil back. And if I invested 10 mil into Urtsalt as well, I could have turned an additional 80 mil profit. 
One last thing that I believe caused the prices of pretty much every involved item to spike was the element of surprise. I literally didn't even know why the prices of Urtzalt were so high when I was mining it. I had to ask around, and people told me about the release of the Portal Nexus. I feel like this was an update that kinda snuck up on the majority of us. I didn't even see it in the polls, although I'm sure it was in there, I just wasn't paying attention, and I don't remember hearing people talk about it before its release. I even recently went to the Grand Exchange asking people if they had heard of it before November 10th, and most of them said that they didn't. So on this day, a super awesome game-changing update came seemingly out of nowhere, and all the house hosts and house enthusiasts were trying to get their hands on the materials to make it. Alright, so now we've covered what happened and why it did. Now we get into the juicy part. How can we use all this information to be the next person to multiply our bank tenfold? The method I'm going to explain could generally be described as investing, but it's not your typical form of it. It's not about just taking a leap and spending loads of GP based on a gut feeling you had. This type of investing involves gathering information and then using logic and critical thinking to arrive at your decision. I'll call it analytical investing. A quick disclaimer though, I don't have very much experience at all in the fields of flipping or investing. The following method and this video in general is just my analysis of everything that I experienced and researched. Let me explain how I arrived at my conclusions so that you can decide for yourself whether or not they're valid. After the craziness of November 10th, curiosity led me to search for whether or not people had done what I could have done by buying things like basalt, urt salt, teleport runes, and bananas before the update. I figured that polls would likely be the first time that the masses would start hearing about it. So I looked on the old school website and found the poll about the Portal Nexus, which is dated the 13th of September 2018, almost two months before the update was released. But yet, prices of the related items started spiking as early as September 6th. So I thought, okay, maybe there was a developer blog in which they described the Nexus. Sure enough, there was, but it was only dated September 11th. So at this point, I was starting to think that maybe there was a shady mod at Jagex doing some insider trading. That, or maybe it was discussed in a Q&A livestream, because Q&As are pretty often the place where new content ideas are first brought up. A Google search of the words Nexus Portal Q&A instead of Portal Nexus Q&A gave me the answer. A result dated September 6th proved that there was a livestream Q&A of the Portal Nexus on that day. Thanks to the fact that Google search results don't reflect changes on other websites very quickly, we're able to see the proof even though the content itself no longer existed on Twitch.tv. So there we have it. There was a group of players who watched the live stream and jumped at the opportunity for investment as soon as they caught word of it. I don't know what was specifically stated in the live stream, but it's safe to assume that Jagex said that the Portal Nexus could definitely be a potential future update. Seeing the rapid, instantaneous price hike of nearly every item involved in teleportation, I'm pretty sure they also stated or agreed that the Nexus would require 1,000 times the normal amount of teleport materials. But simply buying common teleportation items like Law Runes didn't really provide too much profit to early investors. The people who really made bank are the ones who thought outside the box. Everyone knows that Elemental, Law, Soul, and Blood Runes are used in high numbers for teleports. These items also have a very high supply in the market though. The price wasn't able to climb up a huge amount because of the enormous supply. So the people who invested in the runes earned maybe a profit of 61% on average. But some players went the extra mile and most likely checked the OSR's wiki, seeing that not only runes were involved, but also basalt, urt, and tea salt, and bananas. So analytical investing requires thinking outside of the box you've got to think about how likely prices of an item are to rise. This task isn't easy though, because the answer usually involves multiple factors which affect the way the economy works. Let's break it down into a series of questions we can ask to make decisions systematically. Before we pick an item to analyze, we first need to decide whether or not we should even invest in anything at all. Some updates cause item prices to skyrocket upon release, while others don't increase the price of anything. Then investors are stuck selling their items back at a loss because they were the only cause of the price change. The main question that determines whether or not you should invest is, how revolutionary and important is this update or event? Answering this requires breaking it down into other ones that are easier to answer, like how many players will this update affect? 
And will it completely change or replace traditional in-game methods, strategies, or overall preferences? And each of these questions can be broken down into more and more until you're finally able to confidently answer them. Then we can use the results from the bottom questions to work our way upward to a final decision. To add some precision and repeatability to this process, I've created a point system for this question and some more that I'll cover in a bit. We'll go over a couple examples of this step, but let me first explain the point system. Start by answering each of these bottom questions worth one point each. These give simple yes or no answers, so we have to think about them objectively. If the answer to these lies in the green area, count it as one point and zero points if the answer is in red. This bottom row of questions will give us the answers for the two questions in the row above, worth a max of two points each. The amount of green answers in the bottom row will give you the points assigned for their respective bubble. For example, if you get one red and one green for this pair, give their parent bubble one point. This in turn answers a question by saying the update might replace traditional in-game methods, strategies, or overall preferences, as that's right in the middle of the other two answers. For the next tier, add the points from this row of bubbles and assign that number to this single question. And finally, add up all the points you assign for each bubble and refer to this scale. The final number will help you decide whether to invest or not. Keep in mind though, there are other questions you can ask and ways you can break them down, but I believe this system contains the most essential ones and it's not too complicated. Also, step one and analytical investing in general should only be used in regards to updates that involve items that already exist on the market. This process can't be applied to updates that only affect brand new items as their prices tend to be unstable and generally follow a decreasing price curve. All right, let's go over a couple examples using this process, starting with the Portal Nexus update. Question 4A, will the Portal Nexus increase the XP per hour or GP per hour of an action? Well, normal portal rooms are limited to three portals and have only one door hotspot, so you usually have to run a decent distance through a player-owned house to get to the portal you need. The portal nexus would definitely speed up any activity that involves using house portals, so we'll give that question a point. It would also make using player-owned houses much easier and more convenient, so the second bubble gets a point too. As for barriers, there aren't any high quest point or skill level barriers to use the portal nexus, although there are some for building it. But since everyone can use the portal, the requirements for building it don't really diminish the significance of the update. So that scores in the green area as well. And for bubble 4D, I definitely wouldn't say that the portal nexus is niche in any way, because player owned houses are helpful for a ton of popular activities in the game. This pair of bubbles scored one point each, and same with the other pair, so let's give 3A and 3B two points each. Adding those together, we get four points for bubble two. And totaling all the points, we get a perfect 12. According to the scale, we should almost definitely invest. And looking back at what actually happened when the Portal Nexus came out, I would definitely concur. Now let's get an example of an update that did not turn out to be a good time to invest. On January 10th, the Kibos Lowlands were released, and with it, the Hydra Tail. The Hydra Tail, gained as a unique drop from the alchemical Hydra, can be used on a dragon bone necklace to combine it with a bone crusher. This creates the new Bone Crusher Necklace, which has the bonuses of the dragon bone necklace and the burying effect of the bone crusher. This update gave more usefulness to the dragon bone necklace by saving an inventory slot that would normally be taken up by a bone crusher. So this new item not only has the best in slot prayer bonus, but it also automatically crushes bones and applies a prayer restoration effect similar to the one inside the catacombs of Gurent. Let's start with question 4a as usual. Will this update to the dragon bone necklace increase the GP per hour or XP per hour of a skill or action? I can't really see it increasing either of those for any skill or actions because all it really does is save an inventory slot. Scenarios in which you would actually use a dragon bone necklace don't normally require a lot of inventory space anyway, things like AFKing fire giants or lasting longer a nightmare zone. And it would probably actually decrease GP per hour of any combat activity because it's better to wear a damage and accuracy boosting amulet. As for 4B, I can think of one scenario in which saving an extra inventory slot might be useful. On my secondary account, I used the Bone Crusher Necklace at Dagoneth Kings to restore some prayer points since I don't have the Elite Fremenic Diary done. 
The inventory slot I saved by not having to carry a bone crusher on me did make it a little bit easier since I was able to pick up more Dagoneth bones at once. That's an incredibly narrow range of usefulness though, but it does count as making an action easier to do, so I'll give this bubble a point. Question 4C, are there high level or quest point barriers to taking advantage of this update? There definitely are. To even wear the Dragon Bone Necklace, you need 80 prayer, which is a fairly high prayer level that not too many people even bother getting until they're aiming to max out their account. Additionally, acquiring the Bone Crusher means that you have to complete the Mauritania Hard Diary, which requires that you complete some tricky quests and have some high-ish levels. For the last bubble, I would without a doubt say that the Dragon Bone Necklace is a niche item, because it's only useful for a few situations, and even in those situations, most people prefer more DPS over a high prayer bonus. The fact that this update simply saves an inventory slot doesn't really change the activities in which the Dragon Bone Necklace is useful. If the prayer requirement to use it was 65 instead of 80, I think the Dragon Bone Necklace might see some popularity growth. But for the moment, it's still the last thing you want to see as a drop when killing Vorgath. So we got one point in the entire bottom row, which means bubble 3A gets one point as well. 3B received zero points, so we just give bubble 2 a single point as well. Our grand total comes out to 3. Looking at the scale, we definitely should not have invested in the Dragon Bone Necklace due to this update. Let's take a look at the prices and trade volumes from that time period. As you can see, the price of the Dragon Bone Necklace had been climbing for a little more than a week prior to the update's release. But on the 10th, when the update actually came out, the item had already begun to crash. Somehow, the necklace started sinking even lower than before. Looking at the trade volume, we can see that quite a few people did buy them on update day. What this data most likely means is that some people began investing in the Dragon Bone Necklace when the specific details about the update came out but a few of them began dumping all of their necklaces a day before release, causing the price to start plummeting. Then, everyone who was expecting the Dragon Bone Necklace to keep rising bought in, and ended up losing a decent chunk of money. The only people who profited from this update were the most proactive investors. They learned early about the update and predicted that other people would invest. But seeing as they dumped their Dragon Bone Necklaces the day before the Kibos Lowlands came out, I'm pretty sure they knew that the item wasn't going to permanently be higher in price. So these people actually profited off of the other investors, not the general market. Overall, you could have turned a profit on this update if you were one of the first to invest and you knew when to cash out. But it's hard to do both of those things perfectly, so I would definitely agree with the scale in saying that this was definitely not an update worth investing in. By the way guys, I've uploaded this graphic and the ones that will follow to Imager so that if you want, you can save them or print them out for easy access. Check the description for the link. Alright, now that we know how to determine if we should invest in an update, it's time to move on. Assuming you have concluded that a certain update is good for investing, we now need to pick which items to buy. In cases like our Dragon Bone Necklace example though, we've already chosen an update for a specific item so the question is already answered. However, step 3 can still further help you decide whether or not to buy in. But if you're considering an entire update such as the Portal Nexus or the Kibos Lowlands update in general, you have to start at step 2. For step 2 we ask ourselves what items will be required or used for this update. In the case of the Portal Nexus, you need all of these construction materials and the thousands of runes, salts, and 1000 bananas and pieces of basalt. After finding out what items will most likely be used, it's time to move on to step 3. Pick one of the items that you've determined will be used or otherwise affected by the update to answer the following questions. The answers to these will collectively determine whether or not you should choose to invest in it. I've made another point system to help us make a good decision. For each question, pick a section on the line that most accurately answers it in regards to the item that you're thinking about. We'll tally up the points later. The first and one of the most important questions is, what is the supply of this item like in the Grand Exchange? Is it sold in high numbers? If it is a highly traded item, like air runes, it might not be the best item to buy into. Also, how easy is the item to obtain? If players can easily go somewhere and buy or collect a large amount of this object while the price is spiking, that could severely limit the price that it could rise to by helping satisfy the demand. 
Obstacles that prevent players from doing this could strengthen your hold on a good profit margin. For example, the need to complete a master level quest with fairly high requirements would be a pretty good barrier to players suddenly trying to collect and sell the item in question. The third and final question set is especially important if you're a bit tardy to the party by finding out about the update at least a day or two after the initial word got out. The question is, has this item already risen from a stable price? And if so, by how much? If it hasn't risen by much at all, you're probably still in the clear to buy in. If it's risen by 1000 plus percent already, it's probably not a good choice. But, just like the other two questions, the answer to this one can't single-handedly tell you if the item is good or not. Basalt rose by over 4,500%, so even at a 1,000% increase in price, it still would have been a great investment to make. If your item scored highly on the other two questions, there's a good chance that it'll still keep rising, or at least spike massively on release of the update. Once you've gone through these three question sets, you should be ready to put that grand exchange offer in. Now, if you want, you can repeat this process for more items and spread out your eggs in multiple baskets to increase your earnings potential. Doing this will also help you stay profitable should your main item not behave like expected. Since this is such a long video with a huge amount of information, let's summarize everything. A revolutionary update called the Portal Nexus completely changed the standard for teleporting from a player-owned house. It seemingly came out of nowhere for most of us, and all of the house hosts were scrambling to get a fully loaded Portal Nexus. Demand overcame the supply of normal price teleport items, and they subsequently began to rise in cost. But the ones that truly skyrocketed were items that were relatively unknown and harder to obtain, with a much lower supply. By watching livestream Q&As and reading the polls, you can get a head start and analytical investing can help you make good use of that early bird advantage. Analytical investing is intended to be a repeatable, systematic method for making absolute bank with the advent of each major game update. To be completely honest though, I'm probably not going to take part in this often because of all the extra effort involved. I never even really thought very in-depth about this type of investing until recently, after 13 plus years of playing RuneScape. But I thought it's something that a lot of people would find pretty cool and convenient to know. Hopefully, this video will help quite a few people looking to get into some kind of merching that doesn't usually have a huge risk with it. There was an insane amount of research, math, and overall work involved in the making of this video, so if you liked it or found it helpful, please be sure to smash that like button and subscribe. My goal is to be able to quit my full-time job so I can put videos out regularly instead of seldomly. Anyway guys, thanks a lot for watching, especially if you watched all the way to this point. Have a great day and I'll see you next time.